Okay, cool, we should be live. Just quickly checking one or two things here. Okay, so this is a bit of an ad hoc stream. Um, it's not on my schedule, but I've got some time in between, you know, the craziness that is this week in general and things going on with work. So this is a thing that I've wanted to do for a little bit of time. So I wanted to put together sort of a basic kind of guide as to creation of levels and sort of basic design and that sort of thing. So I'm going to preface this by saying I am not in any way a professional game designer. Um, I've not really done this for any other games uh, with any success, but I have played this game pretty extensively. I've got a few levels, quite a few levels now up on the, uh, the workshop for this game that were designed by me. Um, and one or two that are actually in the top rated list uh, as well. So I feel like I must be doing something right. So I'm not going to go through the super complex sort of, you know, the pixel perfect jumps and the kind of traps and puzzles you can make. This is sort of like a, a very basic sort of, how do I get started? What do I do at the first? Where do I, you know, what do I do with this idea that I have in my head? So on the bottom of my screen here, you should see I've got a couple of dot points that I've figured out roughly. So this isn't, you know, the absolute gospel for doing this. This is just the way that I've figured out that works for me. Um, you may find a different way. You may approach this completely differently. Who knows? If you do, that's awesome because, you know, the more diversity, the more different ideas we have in levels in this game, the better everyone is, the, the more fun we'll all have. So, yeah. So the way that I do this I start with the concept. So the concept is something like, I want to make a level that is about space, or I want to make a level that's, you know, a very, a very claustrophobic sort of uh, mine exploration. I want to actually make a theme like a mine, or, you know, I want to have a volcano, or I want to do a lot of jumping. Just some base idea to the level that you want to create to give it some sort of start, some structure to it. Um, <clears throat> after the concept, you have to start thinking about the features. So what's the main thing that's going to be part of the level? So these two things, so the concept and the feature or features, they can be interlinked. You can, you know, I have started levels where I've only had an idea for a feature and then the concept itself has worked out from that. Uh, they sort of intertwine. They can, they, they can link together. They can be completely different. So what I'll do to, <clears throat> excuse me, let's jump in and take a look at some of the levels that I've created to sort of walk through this process. What's a good one? So Rockfall is probably the best one to look at for, for the start here. So for this one, the idea that I had was, and, and this is actually the first level that I created entirely from scratch. So this is the first sort of uh, I guess, proof of concept of this process. So the idea that I had with this one was I want to make a mine, sort of a typical sort of mine level that, you know, to start with that I'm fairly familiar with to begin with. Uh, but the trick is that the mine itself has sort of collapsed. There's been a, some sort of rockfall. Um, and the point is to find your way through the mine uh, I wanted to use the fallen bit of rock as like a maze to sort of fight your way through to get to the exit. But before that, I wanted to go through, you know, some other parts of the mine itself. So I had the concept, I want a mine that sort of caved in. I had the features, which is sort of the rock fall bit, and then the mine itself. So an important point with the feature is that this is the way that I do this in order to not end up with a really boring level. So <laughs> I'm certainly guilty of this. Um, some others may be as well. 
Uh, and what this is, what the problem that I was trying to solve was a lot of the time, if you go and start to make a level without an idea, you might end up doing what I do, which is just create a whole bunch of completely symmetrical boxes. It's meaningless, it's boring, and it's just not a fun level to play. Now that said, there are some amazing levels that have been created that are basically just a grid. You know, there's different enemies in different places, there's different jumps you have to do, there's different things you have to collect. Excuse me. And there'll be a certain route that you have to follow through the whole thing. And if you if your concept for the level is that sort of design, if you just want to make a grid that you jump around in, that's perfectly fine. If that works for you, if you play it and you find it's fun, um, you know, upload it. You might find other people who will say, yeah, that's actually a cool idea. Um, I have found that I can't make a level that boring, but also that interesting, if that makes sense. I can't do just the basic grid and then make it interesting. So the way that I try to avoid that with the feature that I put into my levels. Um, oh gosh, what's happened to my stream there? Okay. Um, I didn't bother with a... Yeah, sorry, this isn't actually displaying correctly. Bear with me. Take that off full screen. Adjust the space a bit. So what's happening here is uh, because I've not set up my keyboard camera that appears sort of down there essentially, um, and because the game displays slightly differently in full screen and windowed mode, uh, that's what's caused that. So I'm just going to have to play with this in windowed mode, and that's fine. To make sure that it displays properly. Um, so sorry about that. So back to the rockfall. So the idea that I had for this is to avoid making a boring grid level essentially. I try and introduce some sort of, uh, I guess, an analog element. So like, the very first thing I did when creating this level from scratch. Um, so obviously, when you when you go to the level editor, you end up with a massive open box, and it's like you know the world's your oyster. Here's a blank bit of paper. Draw something on it. To start with, the first thing I draw is a line, just straight through the map. The very first thing I did with this map with this map was pick. Uh, it would have been the random rock tool, which would have been this one. So this is cool because there's a whole bunch of different uh, rock tiles here. Um, there's a great feature where you click on the random one and then whatever you draw just picks a random one of those blocks to start with. It's a really easy way to make a really sort of varied uh, architecture to a level and it's exactly what I needed for this. So I'll just get rid of those again. So the very first thing I did was to grab that tool and just draw from the bottom of the map, about in the middle, uh, just with the mouse, just in a very unpredictable sort of fashion, a line that went up and to the right. And I did this right up to the top. And then that was it. That was the start. I had this wall that you can sort of jump up to almost the whole way up. I tweaked it here and there, sort of back and forth a bit, back and forth, depending on how much room I needed in here, or whether I wanted to close up a bit of space here. Um, I think the wall that I drew initially, you could actually jump the whole way up, uh, but I decided uh, partway through the process, I wanted to get to a point where you had to jump up it, but couldn't get all the way up, but there was a point to coming up here. So I added the, the switch here to turn on uh, this platform so you could get into the rest of the mine area. And I added the spider, um, just as like a very basic enemy, but also specifically uh, specifically for this level, I wanted to, I was experimenting with getting ammo. Um, a lot of freezing jumping, oh, that's not good. Well, I don't have any drop frames, I don't know what's going on. Oh, well, I'll push on. It's not like I'm playing playing the game itself. Um, we'll have to see how it goes. So part of my concept for the level was that, uh, well, maybe I'll get to that in a bit. 
was sort of the puzzle here with um, the ammo. I wanted to make sure that the player had enough ammo to get through the maze at the end. So that's why this is here. So the point of this is of this level overall is to open these doors, grab the ammo, find your way through the mine itself, and then get all the way through this maze to get to the end. That was, you know, the concept and the feature of this level. Um, the route was developed after that. So it was through tweaking bits and, you know, starting with this wall and then figuring out the rest of the way. I wanted to go up through the mine, then sort of along the top of the screen to get into this bit here. Uh, from that point, it actually doubles back because you get through this door, you flick this switch, you grab the key. You're not coming all the way back down here. You grab the ammo, you come all the way back through the mine itself. You start picking up the treasure as well now that you've got the key, ideally. Then you fight your way through the rest of the mine to the exit. So the reason you can't do it all in one single loop is because you don't have enough ammo to get through here. The point was you meant to get to about here and go, oh, okay, I'm out of ammo. I have to go back and find it. And that worked pretty well. The one bit of feedback that I found, um, I actually had the pleasure of watching someone play this for the first time live on another Twitch channel. And that was really insightful because they didn't do quite what I expected them to do. Uh, so they weren't necessarily going for a perfect score. Um, but what I did notice was that they came through here, they got this door open, they grabbed the, they, they flicked the switch to the green door, and then they went back for the ammo without grabbing the key. So redesigning this level from scratch, I would have maybe put this there just to increase the likelihood that, that once you're at this point, you've got the key anyway. Um, because otherwise, what that person would have had to do, they got all the way back here, they grabbed all the ammo, and then they grabbed the key. So at that point, they would have had to go through the entire level again, and that wouldn't have been great. It would have been too long. So a Crystal Cave level should go for about three minutes or so. It shouldn't take more than that to do a fairly casual playthrough. If it takes longer than that, you have a very complex level or just a level that you force the player to go through multiple times. It gets long-winded, it gets a bit boring. Um, you run the risk of someone just giving up just because they can't get to the end in time. So while there's no time limit, there is a limit to how long it's fun to go through a level, if that makes sense. So that's the concept, the features of the route. So the details, I think the best way to explain this is if I do actually play through the level a bit. So the first thing, obviously, oh god, this thing, oh no, this is falling on me. The intention that I had with the start of this level was to panic the player, first into shooting this thing, then making that fall and go, oh, okay, well, maybe I should go this way. And at that point, they'd see the ammo and then realize, oh, that's going to come in handy at some point. Then by the time they've come up here, they're like, oh, okay, I'm out of ammo now. I need to get some of that ammo that's above me. So you have to do this sort of bit here. That was the intention that I had. Um, and it was rather interesting seeing the person who played this live um, just go straight up here first thing. They completely ignored the... Uh, caterpillar monster. They came all the way up here, shot the spider obviously, clicked the switch, then came back down. I think they actually completely ignored the caterpillar. So despite my best intentions of level design, um, you know, they actually got to this point. This puzzle was basically root because they had all the ammo they needed. And then the platform itself was already moving by the first time that they saw all this. So that was a little bit of a disappointment, but, you know, everyone's going to play this game differently, and people are probably not going to play the levels, especially your first few levels, are probably not going to be played in exactly the way that you would expect. So, you know, that's fun too. Uh, I do feel kind of proud that they, they did get tripped up by this little spike here. They did land on that and lose a bit of health. So, 
disguising the green, <laughs> disguising the green, uh, the green spike there in amongst some grass is a really awful trick, but it works sometimes, and it's a thing that people can learn to avoid. So the overall philosophy I have with building levels for this game is. <sighs> There's a really good way of describing the process of learning chess. It's a very easy game to learn, but very difficult to master because the moves themselves are quite simple. Um, you know, you spend five minutes teaching someone the rules of chess, they can play a full game start to finish. But it doesn't mean they're necessarily any good at it. I actually take kind of the opposite philosophy with uh, levels like this. I want it to be like a puzzle game where you kind of, you know, you learn all the puzzles. You you know this spike is here, so you have to jump over it. Um, you have the question of all the ammo here, so you learn to get the ammo before getting the caterpillar uh, before shooting the caterpillar. So I try to make levels that are difficult to learn, but easy to master. So once you've figured out all the little tricks that I've put into a, into a level, I want you to be able to play it fairly easily. Wow, how close is I to... Okay, I actually get injured if, I, if I'm if i standing that close. That's unexpected. So... Right, so this part. So keeping on with the details on the route. So... I'd already designed sort of the, uh, the maze part and a bit of the rockfall. I wanted to make this a little bit of a maze as well. So the idea that I had here uh, originally was to put a little of the... Um, a few of those new worm... Uh, characters in it, so the little things that pop out of the walls uh, at random places. This was quite early in this game's development. I think there were still some bugs with the worms. I couldn't get them to stay in this area. They kept appearing on different walls and then escaping this little bit. Um, which made the whole thing much more difficult. It wasn't really as intended. Um, and this sort of thing didn't really work. I eventually landed on this sort of puzzle, where there's all these green guys. So these guys are meant to go in all different directions. So they're meant to, you know, they travel in a random direction and then when they hit the end they pick a different direction at random and then go in that direction. The reason they're all traveling up and down is because there's a whole bunch of these little blocker red blocks. Uh, and it's designed to keep them moving up and down, just so that this particular puzzle works. Um, I didn't want them all sort of clustering in one area. I didn't want it to make it super hard, uh, as it often is with levels that hold these guys. I didn't want to make it super hard to actually get through here. So restricting them to these channels seemed like a reasonable way to make it playable. So if I just rush back to that area... Switch as well. I just want the extra uh, health, basically. So, when playing this level the intended way, you don't have tons and tons of ammo, um, which is also why I made it particularly easy to shoot all these guys. Because if you waste a bit of ammo, you end up, you know, not being able to complete it or not being able to complete it with perfect health, and that's kind of mean. Uh, I'm actually pretty proud of how this actually turned out because it ends up being a little bit of a maze where you start down here, you have to jump up to here, you still can't get up there yet, you have to drop down here, get rid of this last green guy, jump back up here, sort of reuse the same elements, so jump over here. Then you flip the switch, and you sort of jump out the top as well. Um, so, details. That got tweaked a lot. That was probably the hardest part of this map to design. You'd assume it might have been the actual rockfall bit, but it wasn't. Uh, the rockfall was relatively easy, it was just a basic little maze to jump through. Tweaking that part to make it a bit of a challenge, but Easy to easy to do, easy to figure out. Or not easy to figure out, but easy to do once you have figured it out. That was the challenge that I had. This bit went through a few variations as well. There were originally a lot more of these little carts, but I guess the fewer the better in, in the end. So 
So the level finishes off with... Oh, and I'll get to the... I'll talk about the presents in a moment. The idea was they'd flick the switch, they'd grab the... Uh, they grab the key, get to this point, and, lo and realize, oh, hang on, I'm out of ammo, I can't actually finish this. So you jump all the way back down. Oh, I've left this guy. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Double this ammo. And there's plenty of ammo once you've actually gotten in there to do everything. So I've got 26 bits of ammo, there's not 26 blocks left to do. So jumping back through here... So this is the second run through the level. Um, the time is currently at about 3 minutes. You wouldn't have taken this long to get there, to get to this point. It's a lot quicker than that. I'm, I'm just simply, you know, I've, I've been talking, I've been waiting around in bits. So all of a sudden, the, the minecarts aren't just there to jump past, they're actually an obstacle to open these chests, and they're an obstacle to get to this last bit here. So this little area up there wasn't used in the first uh, run through this level, but it is in the second part because the game has changed, because you now need to get different things, you need to get the, uh, the treasure chests. But then that done. The last few little puzzles here were the fruit pickups. So in retrospect they're actually not too difficult to get to. Um, and this, as I said, this is actually the first level that I created, so this is sort of, you know, not maybe not the best representation of all this. There is one little puzzle that I am very proud of at the end of this level here. But you come down here, you're just, you know, you're shooting blocks out left, right, and center, and just walking along. So that little red and green present down there is actually one of the eggs that you shoot to finish off the the bonus pickup. So my intention... I've just realized I've forgotten a treasure chest out there. But that's okay, I'm not going to go back for it. Uh, the intention was you'd shoot this block that was here, and then just immediately drop down and go, Oh, damn it, I've just missed the bonus. Um, that puzzle has worked so well, I fall for it all the time, and I definitely did throughout um, all of my playthroughs of this level. So then you realize, oh, okay, I'll stop myself from grabbing it the first time, I have to come down here. Oh, wait, I actually have to go all the way around here and drop down here. Oh, wait, I can't do that either because that block is still there. So you end up having to shoot out the blocks from the, this other direction in order to get to the bonus. And that little puzzle found new life in a recent level that I created as well, which I'll get to. Uh, hopefully in this presentation. So I'll grab the last few things here, the last bit of fruit. I had intended to make the fruit a little bit further away in this in this uh, in this part, just to make it a little bit harder to get to. Um, but I was finding I wasn't really getting to them quickly enough, even though I knew exactly where they were in the early playtests. So I decided to make them a little bit closer together. And then you got the last little thing here. You finish off by grabbing the last gem, the last bit of the bonus, and away you go. So, to finish off the basic sort of process here, um, the last bit there, I guess, is what well, we're actually developing the level is the name. I'd actually called this Rockfall from the very beginning. So naming this one was quite easy. Um, but sometimes, and especially with some, some other of my levels, uh, the name takes a little time to get to. You know, um, Like I said, Rockfall was the uh, the big the be all and end all of this level, but um, all right, well, let's jump to a different level to explain this. Probably, yeah, probably this one's the best next one to go to. So this is called Crisscross Caldera. So the very so the concept and the feature of this one ended up fairly intermingled. So I basically wanted to make some sort of volcano. 
Um, I wanted to make a level that had the volcano in the middle of it. I wanted to make it so that you had to jump over it a couple of times before you even went down here. I wanted to make it a level where you had to come down here to get some of the pickups no matter what. And then the rest of the level sort of came out of that. Um, so the volcano itself was the very first bit that I drew. Um, and again, I went with the, I want to make this sort of analog. I want to, I want to make it not look boxy. So the first thing I did was draw the sidewalls of it. This one up, you know, from the, from the bottom here up to the, almost the middle. And then this one down here. Um, the, the walls that you see here are not exactly as they were when I first drew them. They've, again, they've been heavily tweaked to, you know, make this little area here, um, this little area here. So the volcano was a little bit wider. <clears throat> but the problem with that was that it took room away from some of the other things that I wanted to have in this level. Um, so just to finish off my point about the name, I'd called this one Caldera from the from the start, and that's actually re uh, reflected in the file name. Crisscross Caldera came about because I ended up realizing, well, we actually go back and forth across the top of this thing several times in the course of the level. Why not call it that? It's a nice sort of alliterative name. So the volcano was the first thing I drew. The second thing that I drew was this. So I intended this to look like, I guess, a bridge that could be lowered over the top of the, um, the rim of the volcano. I played around with this quite a lot. This is probably the most time consuming bit of the level, even though it was, it looks basically the smallest bit. Um, hopefully it ended up looking enough like a bit of machinery to give the idea that it was meant to lower into this position. It was tough to get it to a point where it made sense. So the route. I knew that I wanted to jump over the volcano. I knew that I wanted some sort of puzzle on either side. I knew that I wanted to start in one corner at the top and finish in the other top corner. That was basically it. So let's just play through this and you'll see some other things straight away. Straight away, one of the details here is these bats. I wanted to create a bit of a sense of panic. It's like, oh god, I can't jump, there's spikes and there's a bat above me, there's another bat here. So I expect most people who played this level just immediately had to restart because they lost a bit of health. You know, that's... I made some pretty difficult levels at the start. So you then grab all that. You shouldn't... Okay. You know what, this is the thing I'm going to fix straight away. You shouldn't actually be able to jump onto here um, because you're meant to turn this platform on to get up there. Uh, and the reason that's broken at the moment is because I took these bits out. I'm just going to have just the one spike. I think I'm going to turn that around to be the other bit of spike. I actually originally had spikes up here and here as well. Oh, you prefer it that way for the speed run. Uh, okay, fine. You know what? I'll leave it that way. Actually, that, that, that introduces an interesting point because now that I've got this level published, people are playing it, people are you know potentially speed running it, and changes like that, even though they weren't exactly as intended originally, it would change the way that it plays. So you know what? That's a good point, Ruba. I'm going to leave it as is. Um, and I'll just chalk it up to an interesting detail in a level that I made right at the start. And, you know, that's it. I had originally had spikes here and here because of this section. So this anti-gravity section, this was the bane of my existence for a good three hours or so. It took me a long time to figure this out. Not just this puzzle here, but the problem of having, okay, now that I've got anti-gravity, if you made it through all this quickly enough, you could actually jump through here. Actually, this 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 wasn't originally how to exit this area. Um, originally, you made it all the way back to the door and then came out this way. And the problem with that was that with the anti-gravity, if you still had a few seconds, you could actually make it up here and grab all the ammo straight away. 
I guess it's kind of ironic that in fixing that problem um, and deciding to make the exit here and then putting these spikes here so that there's no way to exit with any gravity still turned on, I've actually completely screwed up the intention of that by making it able possible to jump over here. So, you know, lesson learned. Um, this little area changed a couple of times too. Originally, this block, this this block of four bits here was over one, so it was actually in this little section. This guy was pointing the other way, and I had this great little trap set up. I actually had two of these walking rock things, and I had them fairly well timed to the point where I'm gonna demonstrate this. Okay, trap part one. There's falling spikes here, so the idea was you'd walk through here, and if you stopped moving before that point, you'd get hit by the spikes. Um, the point was then, if you drop down here to grab those gems, you'd get hit by the purple guy. And then once you were here, once you'd activated the rock, you'd get stuck in this little section here, <clears throat> Excuse me, and find it difficult to get out without being hit again. I had that really well timed with this uh, rock guy. I had actually originally set it up with two that walked in different directions at the start. Uh, but at the time, there was another bug in the game where uh, they didn't actually respect which direction they were pointed in from the start. So that's actually how this bit ended up the way it is. I think it's a little bit easier to get through. So having got through all that... Uh, and the location of this fruit pickup changed a couple of times too. So once we've done that, you go, okay, I can't go down here, oh dear, that thing just shot. Good grief, I have to jump through this. I'm really proud of this little bit. Really happy with how that turned out. So the anti-gravity bit. Again, this had a lot of revisions, a lot of different platform changes here and there. So what you might notice with uh, the gems in this level, Every instance of the gems being around, they're in a little stack of like one and then two. That was a little thing that I wanted to try as a theme in this level. I think it worked pretty well. Um, and I think at the end there was actually an equal number of gems uh, of each color, which is really fun. So having got through the gravity level and having or not having grabbed all the ammo at the top, you'd be presented with this. So when I talked about that little trick in Rockfall, where you had to jump around and shoot these blocks from different sides. I turned that up to 11, or possibly even 12 with this level. So, this bit down here I've called the switchback maze, and I'm really, really proud of it. I'm just going to grab this key. Uh, before we get to the switchback maze, because we need the ammo to get through it, this little platform and this minecart and this pipe. I am super proud of this. You can actually jump through here from either side. You can jump here, and it's a little slow to get through because the pipe is falling at you. Or you can jump from this side and run through really quickly because the pipe is pulling you, but then you have to jump very carefully. One of my favorite parts of this is that no matter which side you choose to go to, you have to sit there and wait for the minecart to be in position because you don't have time to run underneath it. See? Oh, well, maybe you do by like a pixel or two. So, but it's, it's harder than it looks. And that's one of the features that I love putting in my levels. It's just, again, it's a thing that's a little bit hard to learn to, the, the first uh, to figure out how to get past it. But then once you do, you know, you know exactly how to fix it. So getting up here. Obviously you have to flick this switch, you have to get over there. If you haven't speed run the level and you haven't just jumped straight across, you have to fall back down, do this jump again. Grab some of these treasure chests while you're there. Now this platform, another thing that I forgot to do in this level, there's meant to be a stopper block about here. So I wanted to force people to jump through this area again, 
just as like a reminder, hey, hey, you know how I tricked you in this bit? You have to go through it again. But I guess I forgot to put that block back after, you know, some testing or whatever. So then you grab these bits of ammo, you come to here, oh, I can't get through here, I have to open this door still. Made this guy a very, a relatively easy enemy, I guess. If you can get to this block, it's, it's very easy to dance around him. But then of course there's the fruit that appears, and you have to rush back through this little bit, and then endanger yourself there again. Um, so, now we have all the ammo. We get to the switchback maze. So, you can't fall down here. You have to shoot this block and then that block. Now that you've shot that one out, you can come down here, but you have to shoot this block. Grab the treasure chest, wait for the bat to do its thing. Then you go, oh, okay, I'll just shoot this block and I'll grab these gems and then, oh, I can't go further down. So you switch back to going this way. You shoot that guy out, you shoot this, you shoot that, and then from here, you can't just jump down there, you have to shoot that block, because you're drowning that little bit of green stuff. Then you shoot that block to be able to jump back up here, and you go, oh, okay, cool, I'll come down here, and then... Okay, there's a jumpy thing. Right, I have to shoot that block from the other side. So again, you switch all the way back. An earlier version of this level actually had one of those little timed flame things here. Uh, I got rid of that in the end because it just ended up being boring. You just ended up waiting a few seconds every time you pass through. And it got annoying the more times you do that. So you come back here and go, oh, okay, I need to shoot the green, um, this block down here from the other side and I have to shoot through the green thing. So, realizing then, you can't jump over the green thing if you shoot it and avoid taking damage. The solution to the puzzle is to shoot and kill it here. Shoot that block from over here as well, so shoot over the remains of the green jumpy thing. Then you come down here and then you can shoot that block out. Make your way down here. Grab all the treasure is a really great reward for having figured all that out. And then turn on the platforms that lower into into the volcano. What fun! So jumping through here is a nice little reminder that these turrets are still on. So you have to be very careful about making your way through here. Now there's more platforms down here than I intended to be here at the beginning. Um, I found it really hostile through the first few playthroughs of falling down here and then immediately falling into lava. That really sucked. I wanted to make it more of a puzzle initially about, you know, getting around here, jumping over more lava. It just turned into a fairly horrible, fairly hostile thing um, that really ruined the fun of this level. So I made it a little bit, a little bit friendlier down here. There's still some pretty hairy jumps. To get all the points down here, you still have to jump to these platforms. And then you have to use these moving platforms to get the last two bits. And you have to be careful while doing that because if you end up on the platforms as they go through the turrets, you have to act very quickly, very precisely to not get hit. So. <laughs> I'm surprised I made that jump. So the point was you get up to here and then you're done. Take this platform, now you get to do your little victory dance across here. And that's that. So, a point I want to make here is that it's... Okay, this is actually a fairly complex design point. Uh... It's a good idea to make sure that anything, any switches that you have, any doors that you open, or well not necessarily doors, but certainly the switches, if you have a switch that turns a platform on or off, uh, you really should try and put it in a point of the level where the player can also see the thing that it affects. So <clears throat> it doesn't apply to turrets because there's no visual indication whether they're on or off. 
but the platforms for sure. Uh, what I wanted to do here was to make sure that once you'd fought through all of this, you flick this switch and you realize, oh, okay, that's moving the platforms up and down. I've seen a lot of levels that have been created by people where you fight through a whole thing, you get to a switch and it's like, great, I flicked the switch. What was the point of that? What does that actually do? And then you have to go back through the level and figure out exactly what you just changed. Um, making sure that the thing that you affect with the switch is in is visible at the time just makes the level a little bit easier. Uh, unless you specifically want to make it part of the puzzle to figure out what you actually switched. Um, and a few people have done that. There's a really... What's the right word here? There's a fairly crazy level that someone drew that's basically a huge open space and then just a massive grid of just switches. And there's all sorts of turrets, there's all sorts of platforms, and the puzzle of that level is to figure out what platform, what switch does what to get you to the end. Um, it was interesting to play. Uh, I don't think I actually finished it. I got a bit frustrated, as you can imagine. So that's just a, another design consideration. You should make it fairly obvious what uh, consequences the player's behavior has in a level. Something else I want to mention as well is placement of gems with the, with a relation to the exit itself. Uh, some levels it doesn't matter too much, like with this one, it's obvious where the gems are. Um, the overall layout of the level is fairly open. You can see basically everything. You can get to basically everything. Um, there's a lot of levels where that are a lot more maze-like than this. Uh, gosh, how do I word this? So there's a feature of this remake of this game where once you've gathered all the gems, the sides of the screen flash green to tell you, yes, you're good to go. Making, uh, making a level where some of the gems are right near the exit really nullifies that feature because uh, you don't know for sure until you have collected all the gems, that you've collected all the gems, if that makes sense. So if there, if I had wanted to, if I wanted to remove the gems here, then the last gems that you would collect would be down here. So once you collected these four gems, the you know the sides of the screen will flash green, you'd go, okay, I'm done, I can get out of here now. From a playability standpoint, that would have been better for this level. Uh, two reasons i didn't do that two reasons i did want to have these gems up here one is that yeah i think i did so there's actually two four six eight ten two four six eight twelve twelve two four six eight Okay, I think my math is right. I think I had 12 gems of every color. So that was just a design choice. That was part of the theme, the concept for this level. Uh, I wanted to have an equal number of the gems of each color. That was one reason why I wanted to have gems up here so that it wasn't quite as obvious that you'd gotten all the gems. The other was, as I mentioned before, this level is fairly open. It's relatively non-linear you can basically go almost anywhere so it wasn't that important uh, from that point of view so what do i talk about next how long have i been streaming gosh 45 minutes i've been yabbering on here this is cool so okay part of my little list here that i haven't addressed just yet is the feedback. So I've got some great feedback in chat here. Um, <laughs> a mistake I made before publishing the level left it open to a bit of speed running. So that's interesting. That's some feedback that I'll take on. Um, I'll just have to be a lot more careful in future levels. So what's the next level that I want to look at here? 
maybe ah uh, yes the fire pit so this one this one was interesting because it started more with the features rather than the concept and the feature was uh in the discord channel for this uh yeah the discord server for this game the developer actually posted a gif one day of um <clears throat> this funny game feature where if we just move milo down here to start with where these little tornadoes they draw you in and they kill you on touch or if you jump past them you end up you know falling into lava sort of thing and the gif that he posted was of grabbing one of these mushrooms at which point you can actually essentially eat the tornadoes um the thing that he showed was simply this sort of thing but just grabbing that and then okay ignore the ignore the spike and then ending up on a platform over here. Part of the puzzle of this level was realizing, oh, okay, now I can't get back. So part of the puzzle was going, okay, I have to grab every second one in order to make it back. So how, Ruba, how long did it take you to figure that out? Because this is interesting. I don't think I actually saw anyone play this level. Um, so I guess in one way this is uh, a level that I didn't get feedback for, unfortunately. So I wonder why I'm not taking damage when that falls. That's interesting. Oh, it's because I've got the mushroom. Of course. Can you actually make it? No, you can't. Okay. So, that feature is how this level started. Uh, I knew I wanted to have a thing on either side. And the way that ended up, I ended up having a switch for one of the doors. And then an on-off switch for one of the platforms, just the way that worked out. I knew I wanted to start roughly at the top in the middle, work through a few different puzzles on either side, and then fall the way through to do this as like a victory lap. You didn't even manage to get through it the first day. That's that's interesting. That means I made this level a lot harder than I intended to. So this is another interesting lesson. Not only did I make a level a lot harder than it needed to be, or no, it's as hard as it needed to be to make this feature work, but as a result, I made the level really awfully hard because this ended up being the last thing that you did. So you'd work your way through the worms, you'd manage the your way through all this. You'd get through this little obstacle course that I'm super proud of still. In retrospect, I'd probably remove this bat because that jump, especially after surviving this, the jump up here to get hit by the bat was often uh, pretty disappointing. So again, in retrospect, I'd probably have removed that. But yeah, you ended up having to do all of this and then jump through all this without getting hit, without grabbing one of these or getting hit by a, a little purple snakes. And then you got confronted with this nonsense. <laughs> hey, Aquatics, how, how's things? So another dot point here, the name. I never really had a good name for this. I've always just called it the fire pit. Uh, that was, again, this is a level that I just named at the start and never really got a better name for it. I started making this level. I knew I would have lava all along the bottom. Um, I hollowed out the side here to give it more of like a, an open expanse volcano sort of feel. Uh, I didn't do that with this side. Interesting. I don't can't re remember my decision behind that. 
Yeah, I could imagine. And like this was, this would have been. I think this was the second level that I designed from scratch. So I'm not surprised that it was that frustrating, to be honest. So, getting, I think, back to the point of all of this, talking about this as like a sort of basic sort of how do I get started with this sort of thing. Um, for anyone who hasn't created a level yet, who hasn't created a level, played through it, and uploaded it, a really good way to start is by looking at some of the original levels from the game. So... One of my very favorite levels of the original game was in episode one, and it was the reverse gravity level, uh, where it had this same background. You started off in reverse gravity. You had all the gems. It was basically just a maze of gems to get and a whole bunch of the green flying things to, to dodge and shoot. So the very first level that I actually designed and published within this game was an interesting remix of that. I call it Obverse Gravity because my idea was to take that level, invert it, so it was somehow very familiar but also very wrong in a way, and then I filled it with all manner of really awful, really difficult traps. I don't know... No, I do know. I would call this probably my hardest level to play through. Um, and I judge that by the fact that I take several goes myself to get through this with perfect health, and it's a struggle. So no real details to point out here. Um, yeah, at this point, this is just an example of make it, you know, riff off one of the original levels, go with an idea that, you know, works and then play through it. Um, adapt it to your own sort of ideas and playthrough and go from there. Another level that I did that with was the level that I and probably some other people called Sector Alpha. And again, this is an episode one level. I actually never bought uh, the full game as a kid, so I only ever had the shareware game to play as a kid. Uh, I didn't play through episode two and three until, you know, a month or two ago when this when this remake came out. So I didn't actually have the benefit of knowing about all the, all the rest of those levels. So this one, I took the same tack. I grabbed the original level, I completely reversed it, moved some things around, moved the doors around, <clears throat> made some enemies a bit different. So this here, uh, this level. So these these two sections here both had this same guy. <clears throat> Gosh, excuse me. But I wanted to make it a little bit different. So instead of having a second one of these guys, I made one of these guys, which changes this puzzle completely. And from memory, I think I moved the air thing up one or two. Uh, one or two spaces, just to make it a little bit easier to hit. So even though this looks fairly familiar, this this changes this bit of the puzzle completely. I added in a few extra birds here and there. I think I moved some of the... Uh, I think I added a few taps. And I moved them around a little bit as well, I think. This little bit, I changed this entirely just by adding the two minecarts. This is actually a little bit more difficult than I wanted to make it, but removing either of the cards at this point just made it way easier. It wasn't really any different. What else to say? Oh. <laughs> so this looks exactly the way it did in the original game, except this danger sign is just background. It doesn't fall at all. In the original level, I think it had... Gosh, where is it? Yeah, it had um, one of these little two-part blocks rather than the four-part. 
I wanted to kind of select the player out and go, oh, this doesn't fall. Okay, that's interesting. So I had to build this up a little bit to so you can actually get up there because the original level relied on having this fall and giving you the height to jump up here. But I compensated for that by making the jump up here rely on the danger sign falling instead. Hey man, thanks for coming along. Um, yeah. So in conclusion here, if you're not sure where to start, um, take a look at some of the original levels. There's actually a website uh, where someone long, long, long ago extracted all the original levels from the first two episodes. I don't know why they didn't have this, the third episode. Maybe they just got bored doing the whole thing. Uh, it would have been fairly a fairly tedious process back then, I would imagine. Uh, but yeah, you can download the um, basically the whole maps for every level in episode one and two. Uh, and that's what I did. I grabbed that. I downloaded the map uh, in my imaging Im image editing program. I simply reversed it or flipped it sort of thing and just experimented with it from there. Uh, and of course, the name, I called this, I've never actually pronounced this, but I guess it's Sector Apla because that's alpha backwards. That's the entirety of naming that. One of, oh yeah, there's about, so all of the, the files that I've got here, I've only actually uploaded about six levels, I think, in the game, but I've got close to 15 files here, and I've, I've cut this down a little bit as well. For every 10 ideas that you have for a level, eight of them will be crap. You'll try it once and go, oh, okay, maybe that's not going to work. I can't. I can't justify making this into a full level, or maybe it's an interesting thing, but you know, I don't really have a way to, uh, I guess, work it into any level, or it'll work in a different game with different mechanics. But because this is a crystal cave, it's relatively simple. You know, jumping around is this certain way. It doesn't work in this game. That's eighty percent of your ideas. Another ten percent of your ideas, another one in ten, will be, oh, this has some merit. Um, I think I'll just save it in a level file and just come back to it. Maybe, you know, two, three weeks from now, I'll have an idea for a level go, you know what, I have this other concept for a puzzle here in this other file. Maybe I can work it into here. And that's how it's been. That's how the... Um... That's how this actually came about because I had in the, the Rockfall level, I had a very basic version of this and then I expanded it to... This, the gamepad level, uh, you'll see. Uh, I I will reserve that, the gamepad level thing. That That's just the concept. That's not a full level. I will reserve that for my advent calendar entry, just to keep you on your toes. It's not as cool as you're thinking. Don't worry. It's not. It's not some amazing idea. It's just a silly thing that I came up with. Uh, just for fun though, I will say there is a clue to it, to what the gamepad level is, and it's visible right now. I'll leave it at that. Where else do we go? So, I guess it'd be fair to give an example of one of those sort of half ideas. And that I'll show you will be the tower. So this is absolutely obviously not a complete level. This is just, you know, with these blocks, I counted to about the middle of the thing. And then I wanted to have these platforms that only moved in a certain area. So I've actually mentioned this on the Discord uh, a couple of times. This is an attempt to make a puzzle where Sorry, bear with me for a second. Report. Spam. Malicious links. Report. And 
and ban. Goodbye, spam bot. Getting faster with that. I'm still getting used to the some aspects of streaming, but you know. Right, getting back to this level. I've mentioned on Discord a couple of times, I wanted to try making a puzzle where instead of just turning on one of these moving platforms and then just riding it the whole way through, <clears throat> I wanted to make a puzzle where you had to turn them on and then turn them off very precisely to get them to a point, to make it sort of a, a permanent platform, but one that you had to move into place. And that's the entire concept that I have at this point. So I can't remember which level it was or who made it, unfortunately. I'm really sorry about this. Um, someone did have a great idea of this where they had, instead of instead of having a column like this of just platforms that could only move, you know, one place, these are restricted with these blocks to only move out into that area and then back again. Um, someone made this great level where there were sort of three platforms along one side. Um, they were all controlled by individual switches. And the puzzle of that bit was they'd come out from the wall, then there were two separate areas sort of on the roof uh, of the level where you had to jump up and through. So the puzzle was that you had to move the first platform um, out a little bit, then the second platform you had to move out a little bit further so that you could jump from the, t from the first one to the second one. And then you basically had to use the platforms to assemble your own staircase to get up through it. Uh, and that was way cooler than I ever got to with this level. So, I've never actually done this, but let's... Just for fun, I'll turn them on at random. No, okay. And the problem with my level here, my concept here, was that it's not totally obvious that you, you needed to do that. Uh, whereas the other fellow totally nailed the concept. Um, and the way that he did that, I guess, was with negative space, because it looked just like this big empty... It almost like it had been designed by mistake. There were no pickups in the thing. There were just these three platforms along the sidewall, two holes at the top, and then one hole at the, the, the one of the corners where you actually entered. Um, and there's a really great level design concept that... Uh, I read about many, many years ago. So the very the very start of the game in Mario on Nintendo, the very first Mario game, it was designed in such a way to very easily teach someone who'd never played a video game before what to do. So you had a level, you had a huge flat ground. The only thing you could see was the ground, the sky, and a person sort of at the very edge of the screen, and the rest was just empty sort of negative space. And it was very intuitively clear, once you saw that arrangement of things, that the first thing you have to do is press right to make the person go right. It sounds obvious when you hear it like that, um, but a lot of games that we play have these little tricks in them, these little psychological things that we just don't see. <clears throat> we don't know, we don't think about. They just influence us in unconscious ways. And designing a fairly complex puzzle with moving bits that you can turn on and off in such a way that someone can look at it and go, ah, I see how to do that. That's very difficult. I honestly couldn't think of a way to make this super obvious. Um, that you have to turn the platforms on and then back off again. That is not a mechanic that's explored in any of the original levels of the game. So yeah, I don't really know how to conclude this <laughs> this point, but um, yeah, hats off to that fellow. I really wish I could remember which level it was. So that's an example of just like This is the this is the ten percent of ideas that has some merit but doesn't quite see the light of day. Do I have any others so far? 
Right, I guess I can talk about this a little bit. So this was... This is a joke level, essentially. I never ended up uh, uploading this. I never ended up adding in the uh, turrets that someone suggested. This I built entirely to test an idea. And that idea was this sort of obstacle course with a platform. <clears throat> uh, the level was built in this way so that if you were to play it, you, you know, this is all you can see. You can't actually see what's down below. So you jump down here, you get to this point, the arrow tells you to go down here, you see there's a switch uh, to open that door, which is obvious. There's this switch to turn on the platform, and then the fun really starts. Uh, you can't stay on the platform, because if it goes back there, you end up falling, so you got to flip the switch. you got to grab these and flick that. And I've actually not done it quick enough to... Okay, let me just see if I can do this first attempt. I probably won't be able to. So the entire point of this was just to... Okay, that's not quite... Yeah, no, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm not going to upload this. The point of this was just to experiment with this idea. Um, first, you, you jump on the platform, you flick the switch, you go through here, that's all fine. You, you go through here, oh, suddenly you have to grab these, flick that switch, that's fine. But then you end up standing on a platform. Let's go down here, just to... Clearly my, my skill is not up there, I, I'm not capable of playing this properly today. Um, but at least moving things around I can uh, explain. So this is kind of mean, because the platform would come to here, and you would have to... As the platform comes through the door, you'd have to be holding right, so you end up falling here. And then as the platform moves through, you jump back up here. Then another little puzzle, the reason this is a little bit different was to try and make the person jump twice. So first into this one, and then second into that one. Um, with the idea that they'd probably miss the second one and fall into the thing and die. Uh, Hey, Rotto, how's things? Then there was this section, which shrank the, the doorway to a single thing. So as the platform moved across, you would have to, again, hold right and then jump up past it. It just looks a little bit different, because uh, obviously you can't fit a door here. Then there was this awful thing. Now, this block I put here is kind of like a hint to say these, these bikes are different. Uh, be careful of them. So as it's moving along, it is actually possible to just, as the spikes start falling, just walk forward on the platform a tiny, tiny bit, and that will actually get you through there. Then there was this little puzzle where the platform would go through here. You had to jump carefully over the top of this <clears throat> to avoid getting hit on that spike. You have to carefully fall down specifically here. to avoid hitting that spike. And then there was this interesting one. I made this as cluttered looking as possible. So the point here is that you'd have to jump up here, then carefully fall onto the edge of the platform here, and then the reverse of that, jump off it and up here to avoid that spike, fall down here. So the same sort of thing here again to avoid this spike, and then fall down here to get to the exit. Like I said, this is never intended to be a real level. Um, I put it on the Discord. A couple of people played it, I think. Um, I don't know if anyone actually enjoyed playing it. I would expect not. Um, but that's not the point. The point of doing this was to have fun, to experiment with a different game mechanic. What I've ended up here, with here is way, way harder than it would ever have been or ever should have been in a real level. But some of this did actually make it into a level that I've published. So moving on to keen.lvl. So this is Billy's last stand. So Billy, of course, refers to Billy Blaze, 
aka Commander Keen. This level is a tribute to one of Apogee Software's greatest uh, inventions ever, the, the Commander Keen franchise. So a lot of things in this level are inspired directly by a few little things here and there in specifically the first episode uh, yeah the first episode of Commander Keen 1 Invasion of the Vorticans. This is another game where I never actually bought the whole thing so I only ever had the shareware version. Episodes 2 and 3 of Keen 1 I don't really like very much. They they're a very different feel. Uh, I guess it's like Crystal Caves. It's a different feel. They're a lot harder. I don't think as a kid I would have enjoyed playing those other two episodes as much. About right for an advent level. No, I'm... When I eventually make mine for the advent calendar, I'm going to make it a lot easier. Um, I want to make a level that's actually fun. I don't want to... <clears throat> no, I don't want to do what most people seem to be doing. The... Uh... Oh, I guess I haven't really mentioned, so... There's a whole lot of new mechanics uh, in this game that have been added for this current version. So the version of this game that we're up to, we'll come back to this level. We're up to version 1.1.0. You, you, I completely failed to mention the snow. Um, well, I guess does someone want to uh, throw into chat the, the link that we have to the, um, the advent calendar thing, because let's buried somewhere in Discord for me. If someone else can throw it in, in chat, that'd be great. So there's a whole community thing that we're doing at the moment where uh, everyone's sort of signing up to do one level each day in December up to Christmas as like an advent calendar thing. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't actually played any of these just yet. Um, I'm kind of having an awful week with regards to work at the moment, so I haven't really had time to play very much. I will get to it, though. I don't know... Cool. Thanks, Rodder. Um, I don't know that I'll try playing these live on stream, um, especially with some of the screenshots and some of the chatter that I've seen. They are actually uh, a little bit hard, so I probably won't do that, but, you know, we'll see. There's a lot of cool new features, uh, which I'll get to in a little bit. I just want to finish talking about this level first. <laughs> so yeah as i said this this level is inspired by a couple of levels that are in the first episode of keen one uh the very first one that you'll spot maybe is this sort of arrangement so this is this is inspired by the first level so you start in this little sort of channel down here immediately above but you can't jump to it you can see these two uh, there's like a whole bunch of poles at the top and then above that was a message written in the standard galactic alphabet. I've included a little message here in SGA. I don't know if anyone's actually bothered looking this up, what these two letters are. It's the, it's the bits in red, obviously, not the gems. Um, it'd be really funny if someone mentioned that in chat, if you could actually go and look this up and see what that actually says. Uh, there was another little puzzle with one of the, I think it was the Gargs, um, the bigger green enemies. There, there was a sort of thing here where you opened the door, uh, this is at the bottom right of, of that particular level, you open the door, you jump past the green enemy, uh, you get to a switch to, no, it was a key card to open a different door. We don't have key cards in, in um crystal caves but what we do have is a switch so i kind of extended this puzzle upwards a little bit just to make it take a little bit more room so this is actually the second part of this level that i designed the first was obviously this the next bit that i did was this little area uh, i kind of almost exactly copied one of the ends to the levels in king one where you have to sort of carefully jump past one of the um, the Vorticans. Uh, I'm very proud of having done this. So this little bit, this little area was difficult to jump up to. There's a whole bunch of treasure. 
Um, I love this little detail. I love that there's a keen helmet stuck in the slime uh, in this game. That just begs for a tribute level to be made, essentially. So getting back to my uh, list of concepts here. So I had the concept. I had a few features. They were all done. Next came the route. So having placed this down in this corner, this section over here, and then this up here, that actually took up a lot of the space in the level. So the rest just kind of happened organically. Um, <clears throat> In the Keen 1 level, you can't get through here straight away. You have to, you know, go up through the level. So actually, let's just play it. Oh yeah, I made it so that the lights are off. So this bit was quite difficult. <laughs> yeah. I'm still kind of thinking to myself I made that a little bit too difficult. Anyway. Ah, whatever. So, these... Ah, this is a fun little detail. So, to get up to... This area here, to jump through here, you have to jump from this platform. If you jump all the way up here and then jump across, you get hit by the spikes. So this little platform being here is kind of a red herring, I suppose. And then these little uh, little platforms, these little ditches, they are essentially straight out of that that, that same level in Keen 1. This bit I wish I could have done a little bit more with. Uh, I kind of ran out of physical space in the level at the end. I wanted to have like a moving platform and then uh, maybe some other enemy. In the end, I just ran out of time. I got bored designing the level, essentially, and just made it this traditional sort of 90s platform jump across thing. That sequence I made a little bit meaner than it should have been, perhaps. Now this one. This I spent a lot of time on. The intention of this puzzle... Ah, come on. The intention of this puzzle was that you had to shoot out... Oh, really? There we go. Okay. Without shooting the eye. Well, I suppose you can. It's a lot easier though if you... take out the first eye though. Anyway, that was the intent. That was the intention that I had anyway. Sorry, talk among yourselves <laughs> for a moment. Wasn't going to bother with the fruit. Anyway. Yeah, okay. So it's doable, but not super easy. That's fine. two platforms there. And then I wanted to make it easy enough to fall back down here to be able to see that guy and just run past him essentially. I've got plenty of ammo but actually defeating that guy is quite difficult. Anyway. So what these two characters say, this is G, no, this is U. And then this is P. So I think in the original game, in Keen 1, they wrote the word high in pickups that you grab as just a very cute sort of thing. Uh, I'm just telling people to go up. So this is what that puzzle, the last one that I showed, evolved into this little trick. 
which looks terrifying, but is actually pretty easy to do once you rumble the pattern that you need to do. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. And then of course, right at the end, I had the idea of putting the fruit pickup in there as well, so you had to go back to really, um, really perfect the move, I guess. This is interesting. There's no jumping enemies in this game, so I couldn't really just put a Vorticon in here. So what I ended up with was this sort of puzzle, where the best way to go is to drop the danger sign, time everything so you can grab this pickup, and then just shoot everything with that. And then I think I might have made this a little bit too difficult. Got it. I had jumping enemies? Oh gosh. I don't know that they would work super well in this level, in this game, just because of the relatively limited space. So, one of the reasons I think this game is so easy to make levels for is because the levels are quite small. Uh, jumping enemies certainly work in Keen 1, simply because of the scale. The levels are... I don't know for sure, but they feel maybe four times as big as a level in Crystal Caves. So, grab that, double this Christmas cheer, and I've forgotten to flick the switch for the red door. Right, that's an interesting... That's a change I didn't end up leaving in. At the end of some levels in Keen, if for those who haven't played the game, I assume most people who are watching this have actually played Keen 1. Um, <clears throat> Part of the puzzle in the game was to collect a bunch of items specifically. To honour that, I wanted to put one of them behind this door, but realised that if you came up here exactly as I've done now, without actually opening that door, and then you trigger the fruit, it's behind the door and you can't get it. I didn't want to be that mean to people. So obviously coming back here, dropping down here, because in the original game you couldn't jump up here to begin with. Grab all this stuff, just missed the cart. Uh, I'm not going to bother going back for the treasure chests. And then, no, we go up there again. And then finish the level. So, is that everything that I wanted to show off? Okay, the other thing that I wanted to do in this stream was to actually do a little bit of live level design. So I put a few screenshots in the Discord about um, a level that I'm designing at the moment, which is the Rift, which uses some of the new background blocks that have been added in this update. Uh, these ones, for example, which show... It's the same tile sort of over and over. <laughs> that obviously looks just black here. <clears throat> but if we switch on the light, it's space. And there's actually a very subtle, um, a very subtle parallax scrolling. So the uh, the space background isn't actually, you know, completely static. It actually moves. It actually slightly moves at a different pace to the rest of the screen. It's difficult to show in this tiny area. Uh, but if you look, the star just above Milo at the moment, it actually, yeah, it moves at a slightly different speed to Milo. So that's kind of fun. Um, so to finish off this stream, I actually did want to go through a little bit of actual, you know, live level design, um, and show off the rift. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that today. Uh, I haven't been streaming that long, it's only been an hour and a half at this point, but it is 10pm here, uh, here in Australia. 
unfortunately, I think I need to sign off at this point and get some sleep. So, I think what I'll do in a later stream this week, so probably on Friday night. Um, gosh, is today Thursday? It is. Okay, so maybe tomorrow night I'll actually show a bit of live level design. Oh, I guess I should probably finish while talking about my dot points. So I've gone through the concept, the features, the route through the level, the details, uh, the tweaks. Uh, I guess I could have talked a little bit more about sort of tweaking things. So difficulty is hard to get right. Um, lots of people seem to be making very difficult levels, which is fine. Uh, most people playing this game are going to be very, very used to you know, solving problems and things, so that's not so hard, but um, it's hard to balance when you're designing a level because you know every little trick, you know how to jump, you know where to go, you know where all the pickups are, you know the best route through the level. It is very difficult to um, design a level with the right difficulty, just because you know it so well. You can't objectively look at it and go, oh, okay having this thing jump around here makes it too hard or you know making the ceiling too low in that little area makes it too hard to get past that guy there's not much that i can really say about you know balancing the, the difficulty and level it's just a thing you'll get used to the first couple of levels that you make will probably be super hard just be prepared for that uh just as you should be prepared for 0.7 which is the feedback if someone does play your game and you do get feedback, uh, if someone plays your level and you get feedback either through Discord or through the Steam Workshop itself, listen to it. <clears throat> There's nothing more valuable than someone playing around with something that you yourself have created and giving you outside feedback. Uh, even if their feedback is simply, oh look, I couldn't finish it, it was too hard, that's useful. Um, And then I guess I had an extra point there called the future, but I don't know. Not really sure what I had planned to say there, just sort of, uh, I guess, take everything that you've learnt and just try and make better and better levels as you go along. Like I said, 8 out of 10 ideas that you have will be crap. Another idea might be useful, save it in a file somewhere, leave it for another level later on. Uh, every 1 in 10 though will be a great idea, and you should just make it. Make it a level, play through it, make sure that you can complete it. Make sure that it feels easy enough that someone else would be able to complete it, and upload it. Um, and play other people's levels as well, that's another good point. Um, don't just make levels and upload them and then just... that's it. What I try to do every time that I open this game, I go to the Steam Workshop. And I take a look and see, you know, what new levels are there. And then I try and play through them. It's good not just to give other people a bit of validation and a bit of rating. It's also good to get ideas for your own levels. Um, there's 307, that's insane. There's 307 levels that have been created so far by enthusiasts, people who are playing this game. There's a lot of good ideas in there. So, make levels and play other people's levels. And that's probably all I've got time for, uh, for tonight. So, tomorrow's stream will be... Yeah. Tomorrow I'll do the Rift. I'll design the Rift. I'll do some live level design. We'll see how that goes. So, yeah. Thank you everyone for coming along. There's been a lot of great uh, chatter. A lot of good questions. A lot of good ideas here. Um... Thanks very much for being a part of this stream. Um, if you haven't already, please follow me on Twitch. Um, if you install the app on your phone, you'll get a notification when I go live. So that'd be great to come and, you know, if you come along and see what I'm doing. Um, follow me on Twitter as well. It's the same handle. It's at Timix Retro Plays. Um, I don't necessarily talk about my live streams there, but I do some updates, take some photos. Um, it's a good place to keep in touch. And you can message me there as well um, in between streams. So. 
thanks everyone for coming along. That's been this has been really good. Um, I've been wanting to make that video for quite some time, so hopefully it's useful for at least one person out there. That'd be a win for me. So thanks for coming along. Um, stay safe, play hard, and talk to you guys next time.